Charlie. <laughs> Such a scaredy dog. Sorry, I dropped my pink. Happy babes, it's Andrea. And guess what we're doing today? It's another episode of Ask Andrea. I'm super excited. This will be episode four. And it's been a while, and so I've got a lot of questions compiled, and hopefully we have some fun. So I am just going to begin, uh, and I'll be looking at my computer just a little bit to make sure I get the questions right. So very first question is from Rhonda Coleman. She says, I love your videos. What's your day job, and where did you get your tiny attacher? <laughs> um, first question is, I work in the glamorous world of health insurance. I'm I'm basically a senior account manager and I manage the daily needs of employer groups who offer benefits to their employees. Kids don't follow in my footsteps. <laughs> Super stressful, not my favorite, um, pays the bills. So, and then I got my tiny attacher on Amazon and it's been uh, probably my most loved tool. I use it all the time. Uh, let's see. Kim Smith. Hey, Kim. How are you? She says, another great video. Have a question regarding Bible faith journaling. What advice would you give a beginner? She's not looking for like a list of supplies, but basically how to approach it for the first time. So I began by jotting down or pinning quotes or verses that had a significant meaning to me, either a significant meaning for my past, a story that I wanted to tell, or even if it was relevant to me at the time. It was just a, a, a way to just kind of capture something that was meaningful that I thought I could use later. So even if it wasn't relevant for me at that time, I would still just pin it and keep it in one spot so that I could print it or use it, find inspiration from it when the time was right. So. I would basically then just take that verse if you're, you know, what I do is I'm like, I don't know what I want to, I don't, you know, what's on my heart? Like, what's, what am I thinking about? What, what do I need to, to journal about? And I would, if I was feeling stuck, I would just go through my Pinterest board and just find something that, go, that I, you know, would just find something. It usually pops out and I'll just flip to that verse in my Bible and just kind of grab the supplies that I have on hand and start. Like there is no magic formula for getting started. Whatever is inspiring you, just start. So, you know, and using other creativity as inspiration is awesome, but just remember that, you know, God made you as an individual. So do your own thing and make sure that you're not just trying to copy somebody else's style. Maybe it's better to just know that you're capable of your own awesomeness, which I know is maybe hard for some to get their heads around, but even if it doesn't look like somebody else's, still yours, you're still worshiping, that's your form of being in the word and, and being with God. So don't, don't, um, don't think that you have to have the most amazing Bible journal entry ever. Um, it's you spending time with him and that's what's important. So the next question is from Jenny Day and she says, I also like to scrap over the weekends, but tend to feel guilty all the time that the housework is not getting done. When do you fit in the house cleaning? <laughs> I love this answer. This is really fun. Uh, the great thing about being part of a family unit is that I'm not the only one who knows how to clean the house. So I, I don't do everything. There's, I'm number one, I wasn't put here to do the laundry or do the dishes. I just, that's not, that's not my purpose. It's not that I don't do those things. Um, I, but I, I don't feel like those things have to be done before I can spend time doing what I want to do. And you know, I work all day. So my time, uh, basically can be spent however I want to spend it. So yes, there are priorities and yes, laundry has to get done. And, um, yes, we need clean dishes. Those are all very important things, but I'm not the only person who can do those things. So thankfully, uh, you know, my husband works from home. So during the day he'll cycle laundry and I'll put it away eventually. Uh, my older son does the dishes and my younger son puts them away. So they've got a little 
teamwork going on there and my kids clean their own rooms they put their own laundry away they vacuum they clean their own bathroom so there's there's obviously some of you who have younger kids who can't pitch in that much but you know and there was a time obviously when my kids were younger that I was doing a lot more of the housework and spending less time scrapbooking but shoot they're old enough now they can take care of so much around here <laughs> I there was a, a good stretch of like nine months where I didn't even touch the dishes <laughs> so nice so you know I, I do what needs to be done but my my creative time is very very necessary for my mental health <laughs> so and for the health of everybody else in this house so typically the housework will get done when it gets done so and I don't feel one bit guilty about it um, because, you know, nobody's going to give me grief. They might, my, my family does like to tease me that the towels never get into the linen closet because we go through so many, they're usually just in a basket, clean, but in a basket. So everybody knows where to get them, right? But why am I going to fold them and spend the time folding them and putting them away when they're just going to get dirty again in three days? So um, it's kind of funny. The boys will all, always tease me when I actually take the time to get the laundry put into the linen closet. They like, oh my gosh, what are these doing in here? Are these towels in the linen closet? So we joke a lot around here. I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, my house is not a mess. So I, it is a clean house, but... I don't like spending my time doing the cleaning. Um, okay, so Weight Watcher Chick with Grace asks, if you're not working from a kit, how do you pull items together? What's your method to that madness? I have a huge stash, and sometimes that just gets overwhelming if I'm not using a kit. So my answer to that is I always start with the colors in my photo, always. Um, I rarely let the product dictate or lead me. There are times when I say, oh, this kid is amazing. I have a perfect photo for this. And that is awesome. That's like, woo, -hoo, so easy, right? It takes a lot of the pressure or the work out of the, the process of putting a page together. But most of the time, I let my photos guide what supplies I use. So I'll lay my photos out first, and then I'll start picking colors that stand out to me. And I'll say, okay, there's blue, green, and burgundy. And I'll look through my cards that I have organized by color. And also, like, I have a multicolor section or, like, a floral section. So I'll probably start there and kind of go, let me try to find a card that has, you know, three or two of these colors in it. And I'll start there. And then I'll go, okay, got this card. Now, what other solid or patterns or quotes can I find within the colors on this card. So you photos, focus card, supporting colors. So that's pretty much how I pull items together when I'm not using a kit that's already put together for me. Okay, um, <laughs> Izzy does stuff. She asks, who's my favorite kid? Winky face. Um, Izzy, you are definitely my favorite kid because you're basically the daughter that I didn't have. now. Get over here so we can scrap and you can do my makeup and I can do your nails. We'll have fun. DLeo1 asks, I have a hard time with layering. What's your process and how do you decide what to do? Layering is not my strength either. Um, clusters are kind of hard for me, so I basically have the three layer rule. If I can get three items to layer nicely, that's it. I've won and I don't need to go any further. Three items feels like a nice balance for me. So if I get to the third item and I feel like it needs something else, um, I'll work on that and see if I can fit something else that makes it feel balanced or makes it feel like it looks better. And if I'm struggling with that, I just stop. I don't go any further. I just stop with where I, where I am because I'm obviously struggling more to add something than I was struggling to just get those three pieces on. It's just, it's hard to, it's helpful to have an eye for that kind of thing. It's really hard to explain, but the basic rule I use is three items, cluster them, 
however it feels balanced to you and then stop and if you're comfortable with that good deal uh, <laughs> let's see what's next miss Alyssa Duncan hey girl she has several questions so she and I talk every day so <laughs> these questions are actually kind of funny so first question is why are you so cool and my answer is I'm really not she says, is everything you touch magic? According to you, I have pocket power. So hopefully I can, I'm trying to spread my pocket power to others because pockets are great. They're super fun. If you had to choose a favorite manufacturer or two, who would you choose? Or to phrase it another way, whose products do you almost always love? October afternoon, because they have such this cool vintage vibe all the time. Also crepe paper because their florals are amazing and I can always find a way to use their patterns and colors and florals. But also Ellie Studio, the, the everyday usability of their products, they just, they, they go with everything. So if I could only use those three manufacturers for the rest of my life, I'd be a happy girl. I really would. I'm sorry I cannot move to Colorado now, but it's on my list. Have you found an ink that doesn't bleed? I am not an ink expert, but what I th think is I'm pretty sure that chalk inks and pigment inks are the ones that don't bleed through. So most likely the, the ones that you're experiencing with, that bleed through the paper are dye inks. So what I, what I think I've learned is that the ink that's the pigment or the chalk it sits on top of the paper and then dries on top of the paper versus the dye inks they soak into the paper and then dry inside of the fibers so those are the differences there studio calico has some pigment inks illustrated faith inks are all pigment and that's really my experience studio calico does have dye inks which i got on accident thinking that they said pigment ink but they said premium dye ink <laughs> so I clearly missed the whole dye part but the colors ended up being really awesome so that uh, is not my strong suit but thankfully so I kind of had to learn this while I was doing planner pages and doing a lot of stamping on my planner pages and I've just kind of stopped doing stamping in my planner so thankfully, you know, when I'm stamping either like on a photo or on a card for a Project Life page or just for a cardstock layout or whatever, I'm not experiencing the bleed through. So it's not as much of an issue, but I know a lot of you stamp in your planner. So hopefully that helps. She asks also, last question, no, the second to last question. In 20 years, when you have 50 plus 12 by 12 albums, where are you going to store them all? And most likely I'm just going to have to start purging other things to make a room for them because they're seriously important. Maybe a bookshelf isn't as important, but I need, I need room. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to have to just make room. At this point, I already have like 30 12 by 12 albums and I store them in a hall closet up on a, a couple of different shelves. And yeah, it's pretty full. So I'm going to have to start thinking about that pretty soon because my Calyx cubes are getting full from the last four years of Project Life albums where I'm doing two, sometimes three albums per year. So we're going to have to think about that. I'm actually on my list is to get two more of the calyx cubes to go on either side of my television so that i can start storing my albums in there so hopefully hopefully we can make that happen but hashtag scrapbook priorities man gotta make room for the albums i don't know i might have to kick a kid out or something who knows so uh her last question is what are your three favorite colors and that would have to be red yellow turquoise those are the three colors I could not live without. There is actually red in every single room of my house as a decoration, except for my husband's office because he decorates that however he wants and he's got movie posters and blue lights and he's like got a whole editing suite in there. So he, I don't touch in there, but every other room in my house has red 
and then I either use turquoise and yellow around the main area of my house. Also, like Coke bottle green and gray is in my kitchen, but there's red everywhere. So those are my three favorite colors. Probably have been for a really long time. Uh, kind of goes with the whole retro thing. Let's see, what is next? Ooh, Mon Creates. Monica asked, might be a process video question, but how do you cut paper with confidence? You make it look so easy. So it's funny how fickle people are about cutting down paper. For me, it's just paper. I'm not attached to it in that size. I'm not attached to the 12 by 12 size. My plan is to use what I have, never to hoard it. I am not a hoarder. Everything that comes into my space has an equal opportunity to get used, no matter how much I love it. If I don't like it, obviously, it's not gonna get used as fast as the stuff that I love. Whereas some people, like the more that they love a product, the less likely they are going to use it because they want to hoard it. But I totally can't think that way. So, um, you know, if I cut it down and later think, oh shoot, I wish I had that in a 12 by 12, I could probably just still buy it in a 12 by 12 if I really needed it in that size. But most likely I'm just gonna use something else that I have in a 12 by 12 because I use three by fours and four by sixes way more than I ever use 12 by 12. So for me, for pockets, not a big deal. But now with the Traveler's Notebook size, I actually had another box that I had set aside to go through and cut down. And I actually left my paper in 12 by 12 because if I cut down to four by six or three by four, I can't necessarily use them as a eight and a half by four and a quarter, which is one size of the Traveler's Notebook. So I thought, well, I'll keep them 12 by 12, and then when I want to use them for a Traveler's Notebook, I'll cut it down. If I wanna use it for a pocket page, I'll just cut it down from there too. So, um, you know, just kind of depends, but I honestly am just not married to a 12 by 12 size. So I have no problems cutting away. But honestly, I, I actually get really happy when I've cut my papers down because in my heart, I know that I will use them. When they're stuck in a box because they're a 12 by 12 because I don't have a specific way to store my 12 by 12 papers at this moment and I'm working on that, I just feel like they don't get used. I go, oh shoot, I wish I had a, a gold, you know, gold color or a yellow color, like a light blue or something for my traveler's notebook. I have to like take this box and I have to flip through it and I've got to lift everything up and kind of look. So I am working on another way to store my 12 by 12 papers because I do have a good deal of them. I, I do have a lot. So that is something I need to figure out a solution for. It's just they take up so much space and obviously my space is kind of small. So always up for rearranging. Like I just rearranged a couple of weeks ago, like what was in my shelves and where things are. So that's always something I'm, I'm working on. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Ask Andrea. Continue asking questions. I can't wait to hear more from you. Let me know if you have follow-up questions to my answers. Let's dig in a little further. Whatever you'd like to ask, maybe, wait. Not anything, but a lot of things. Uh, let me know and I will put them in another episode. So I will see you in the next episode because we have lots more questions to go over. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.